Hello, my name is Tom Margin. I'm a GP in London and I also work as a clinical lead at NHS Improving Quality. Welcome to the first of our three lessons uh, looking at creating and communicating an improvement strategy using driver diagrams. Over the course of the next three lessons, my colleague David Griffiths and I will be introducing driver diagrams, explaining why the process is so useful for your projects and giving you a step-by-step -step approach to running a driver diagram session with your teams. So this is a driver diagram. They were developed originally by Bob Lloyd and uh, colleagues at the Institute of Healthcare Improvement in the States. And essentially, they're a method of bringing teams together to clarify aims, so generally an aim of an improved system, and then to develop and communicate a strategy to help achieve those aims. They're one of the more straightforward quality improvement tools to get started on with teams. We've used it a lot in our improvement work with small teams working together, uh, for, for example, working at GP, looking at GP practices who are trying to find ways to improve access to their services, right through to groups working on large scale change projects, for example, system redesign around maternity services or musculoskeletal pathways. They are a useful way of breaking down complex problems into manageable chunks and then approaching these, these problems from different angles, uh, allowing teams to generate ideas and think differently. And the outcome of this is easy to, to understand. It's immediate and it's visual and practical. So when looking at a driver diagram, uh, you, you can read them from, uh, in, in this case, from, from right to left. So you've got actions or changes on, on the right hand side. So we'll start things off with this session by introducing a, uh, an example to illustrate the, pro illustrate the process of developing a driver diagram. So we'd like to help this gentleman to lose weight. So the first thing to do is to define, define our aim. It's not enough just to say, I will become healthier by losing weight. An aim needs to be a clearly articulated goal or objective of the work that you're undertaking and it describes the desired outcome. So the aim needs to be specific, measurable, time bound, and most importantly should answer the question, what is it we're trying to accomplish? How much improvement do we, do we want to? Next, we introduce the primary drivers. Now these are system components or factors which contribute directly to achieving our aim. So in this case, in, in weight loss, you, this is a, a simple example, uh, but you'd be looking at either reducing the calories you'd be this gentleman takes in or increasing the calories that he expends. And once again, you can see there are measures built in there. So, so primary drivers are, are referred to as primary drivers because they drive the achievement towards our main aim. Now, they may act together or independently to achieve the overall aim. So the next step is to generate our change ideas. So to help this gentleman achieve two stone weight loss in six months, there are lots of different things we might try. And these are, are our change ideas. These are essentially all the, th the different things you, you might try to help achieve your aim. They're discrete projects, but essentially all can be viewed as hypotheses to be tested to help you achieve your aim. And there are several examples that we can see here. Now we want to bring those change ideas together and to start trying to make some sense of them. So the next step is to, to essentially bring them together into themes or, or groups. And this helps you uh, identify your lower level drivers, your secondary drivers. So in this case, we can see that when, when we group the, the change ideas together, we've essentially got uh, five themes emerging. Um, so we've got the, the themes around eating less, drinking less alcohol, being becoming more active during the day, uh, doing more sport, and introducing lower calorie foods. Having generated our change ideas, 
and group them together into themes. Now we, um, we can start to build our driver diagram. So our aim is on the left hand side and then we put the change ideas of the projects on the right hand side. These projects have been grouped together to make our secondary drivers which are interventions necessary to achieve the primary drivers of reducing calories in and increasing calories out which in turn we hypothesize will help us achieve our aim of losing two stone in six months. So we've got our actions on the right hand side driving the effects on the left hand side. But it's important to note a couple of things. There isn't a correct way of drawing a, dra drawing a driver diagram and th there are no, s no set number of primary or secondary drivers that need to be included. The most important thing is that a driver diagram should, as in this case, indicate a clear causal relationship between our change projects or the hypotheses that we're testing and our secondary drivers, primary drivers and the aim. So I hope we've been able to demonstrate that using a simple example of, of weight loss, how a driver diagram can neatly represent what you're trying to achieve and the different possible ways we could go about doing it. Once you have a functioning driver diagram to visually represent your strategy, then you can actually start to use it to help with delivery. First, it can be used as a method to prioritize activity. Obviously, you can't do everything all at the same time, so a driver diagram can be used to identify which projects or drivers are likely to, more likely to be more impactful or beneficial towards achieving your aim. It's important once you've identified priority areas that you agree measures. Uh, and This is one of the most important elements of improvement work. How will you actually know that a change you make is an improvement? So measurement is absolutely essential. And generally what we find, having worked with teams on driver diagrams, is that you have more process type measures towards the right hand side. Uh, where the change projects and secondary drivers are and then as you move towards the left the t uh, towards the primary drivers and the aim we, we, we ha have more uh, outcome type measures. Having prioritised areas of activity and agreed up the measures it's now time for action. When considering large scale change projects one of the fundamental principles is the idea of lots of lots. This acknowledges the fact that when you're working in complex systems, it's unlikely that one change or project in isolation will deliver your aim. Success is more likely when there are lots of small or large projects working in tandem or parallel towards your aim. This also helps to bring more people with you, working on ideas that interest, interest them, um, and then this therefore helps to build momentum in your projects. A key benefit of driver diagrams is a ready supply of alternative options if one proves uh, s unsuccessful, so it helps you to survive failure. If something doesn't work, you can, you can try something else, another change project from the same driver branch, or something completely different. In the same way, success can be built upon with further projects, again, either from the same uh, or complementary driver branches. Driver diagrams are a living thing because it's a visual representation of your strategy. If it's displayed prominently, it can act as a prompt to remind people to and celebrate success, but also learn from the failures through, through the life of a project. So there we have it. Driver diagrams are a way of visually representing your strategy with clear links from actions to effects also enables you to demonstrate how, one ch how changes in one part of the system can drive improvements towards the aim or the goal. So there are a number of reasons to use driver diagrams and we've touched on a few in this session. The way that they can be used to engage people to bring them together and develop strategy as a means of generating more and better change ideas, identify priority areas for activity, help with measuring progress and surviving failure in the unexpected and also consolidating success during the project and enabling you to share the learning of, from that. In our next lesson, my colleague David Griffiths will be looking at more reasons to use driver diagrams 
and in the final session we'll look through the process of developing your own driver diagrams step by step. That's the end of the lesson for today. Thanks very much for listening.